Whoosh. Hey. hey, how's it going? Going well, how are you? Good. So, um, this is going to be the first time we've ever done this. We're yeah. going to have a trigger warning, trigger warning for this show. And it's not just that we have a new poster behind us, yeah. which is like the first time ever. Um, but uh, we are going to review an anime today, though very dope. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, a little darker than most of the isekai we watch and is dealing with a subject that will trigger people. So I will say that if you have any sort of, um, well, how would we put this? I, I, you're, more, you, I, you're better at talking about sensitive things. I'll let you handle this. The trigger warning is 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 for suicide. Yes. The, the suicide is a big topic in this, and it's it's done in a sort of jesting kind of way, but also seriously. And so it's... Basically, if you're sensitive to any topics that have to do with suicide and don't want to hear us talking about it, you should probably turn off the video now. Yeah. So that was your warning. Uh, okay, so this episode, this show is called No Longer Allowed in Another World. Yeah. And it is... First off, I want to say thanks to Max, my nephew, for uh, telling us about this. Yeah, Max, you've given us some great recommendations. Smart kid. And... Uh, Honestly, I didn't, I mean, I kind of knew what to expect because he did give me sort of like, you know, he did give me an idea of it. Um, but I got to be honest, like, I don't know how I would have felt about this anime if I just like coldly went into the first episode because yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty extreme. It's pretty crazy. Well, I, it, it starts off with your main character and his girlfriend, like, committing suicide. Here. Yeah. Like, like lover suicide. Yeah. yeah. And, and. and and then, you know, Isekai happens. Yes. <laughs> and then and then basically, you know, he ends up in another world. And, uh, of course, this world is a sort of fantasy world that's looking for heroes to fight the Dark Lord. It's, it's you know, the most Isekai Isekai thing ever. Um, but the way this differs is, generally speaking, a lot of the Isekai we've watched, it's somebody that is living so sort of a ho-hum life. Yeah. And they want adventure. They want something exciting. You know, Tsukumichi, I think, is a really good example of a standard Isekai. Um, and... This is not that. Well, it, it's it's an interesting thing because, you know, you're right. You've got the ones where someone, like, really, they're looking for adventure. They're looking for, you know, they're looking to be someone cooler than they are. Yeah. you got the ones where you end up with, like, you know, any sky where, where your main character is a reluctant hero. Yeah. Or, or the few that we've watched where they don't even want to be a hero. They just want, like, they're in this other world and they're like, no, no, I'm just going to, like, live as normal life as I can. But they've got some sort of, like, OP power. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, um, and, and in this one... The main character, he wanted to commit suicide. Yes. Like, and, and still does. And, and yeah. And, and that, that did not stop just because he ended up in a cool world. Like that, like a cool world doesn't mean anything to him. And that's kind of the main reason we had to give the trigger warning is there's no way to talk about this show without kind of talking about and even a little bit joking about the idea of suicide because like primarily all the jokes that aren't I'm in an isekai fantasy world are about him trying to die or wanting to die. Yeah. Every time the bad guy's like, and I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to kill you. He's like, really? And then yeah. he like walks up to him. And, uh, and it's, it's really funny. Basically the main character's name is Sensei. Yeah. Uh, that's how he's known. He's a writer. He's a, like a novelist, uh, from our world. Um, and now he's in this fantasy world and he gets brought by this, um, elf, a priestess yeah. uh, named Annette. And um, she, uh, you know, they've been bringing all these other worlders over to defeat the Dark Lord. We talked about it already. Um, but, like, he's not like all the other ones. Because what I write, really like about this isekai, which I haven't seen dealt with yet in an isekai, is, like, this is, is the problem with you brought too many outworlders to this land to deal with your problems, and now they're a big part of your problem. Well, yeah, and, and they, they really don't seem to have been vetted. No, you know, no. They're, they're like, you know, a lot of the time it's like you have someone and they've been bullied and, and, you know, they come to the other world and like, now they're going to be a hero because like they were bullied, but they were really a good person. It's like one of the, one of the characters that they brought over was just a sociopath who was murdering people on the other side. And it's like, yeah, he's really going to come to this world and be a hero. Well, no. Cause their process seems to be, you're just unhappy in that world. Uh -huh. But yeah, well, it's funny. Cause uh, I yeah, think and then the like truck of destiny hits you like uh, the wrong way to use healing magic actually, I think had a good vetting process. Yeah. They just happened to make a mistake. Yeah. And the guy, which obviously wasn't a mistake, but they ended up picking a guy that wasn't vetted. But, but this, so, so you, get the layer of like this world with the problem all these outworlders and now you have this guy who doesn't want to be there who doesn't even want to live mm -hmm. but he's the hero of our story uh and uh and he ends up you know meeting all these other characters you know of course it's like there's that common isekai trope where there's like 
two like strong female like leads that mm-hmm. are both like in their own own way sort of obsessed with the main character yeah. uh and uh, and there's some other characters and basically he always manages to stay alive because either someone's there to like protect him at the last minute or um he does have one weird power which is that he's poisonous yeah and so, like, sometimes animals will, like, bite him, <laughs> and then they'll, like, get, like, you know, basically poisoned and die. And this seems to be because he's done too many drugs to try and kill himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and once again, one of the things that, like, it's it's a, it's a turned into a joke, you know, it's... But, yeah. but I think there's a lot of people that, like, you know, would not enjoy that. It's not about making light of suicide. No. You know, that's the thing. It's not It's not about that, but it's, like, you know... The, the thing about it is that you're hoping that by the end of it, he finds a reason to live. You know, that, yeah. like that, he, that he finds that he decides that life is is worth living or that there's more to life, you know, than than whatever whatever reason was driving him to like be in such despair that he didn't want to live. Well, I think it's funny. I think there's been a few movies in our lifetime that have dealt with this concept of somebody trying to die but in a comedic way, but usually it's because they think they have a terminal illness. Yeah. This this one is just a little more difficult because he's just a depressed person, you know, and, and, and which which makes it more difficult. But I don't know. I think it's like really, it's really intriguing because you watch the show and you're sort of like, you feel kind of bad yeah. about it being funny, but at the same time, it is it actually ends up being really funny because it's unique yeah because you don't see stuff like this i mean i can't even imagine i mean i actually could see like someone in america taking a shot at something like this but it would be considered so daring if it was american tv i mean we have to have a trigger warning yeah yeah where i feel like with this like it's it's just like i don't know i just i really like it i mean i I like how like what i love i love so like you said he's an author and and He's meeting all of these interesting people, you know, interesting people, interesting characters as he's going through, you know, this other world. And, and he gets so into it when he sees someone with an interesting life. Yeah. And instead of being a hero and dealing with, you know, whatever issues are being had, he's standing there on the outside being like, Ooh, tell me more. Tell he's me like, about your life. He's writing in yeah. his, like, his little journal. And, and yeah. it's, it's really hilarious because like you see these things where he's really inspired and, and like, loving what he's doing and he doesn't yeah. want to write something epic um but but in the end it's like anytime where someone's like i'm gonna kill you and he's like please do yeah he's like <laughs> so excited about it yeah he's and it, also so unique looking he's very unique and i also love his vibe because and he's also an adult yeah he's very much an adult generally speaking almost every isekai almost every anime in general that we watch is a teenager i mean that was one of the things you said about kaiju number eight yeah is like you know he was an older guy and i like that he has no interest in being a hero yeah i like that you know he he has his band of people together and they're adventurers and their goal is to save the world his goal is not to save the world yeah. he has no interest in that um but like his but his goal is to find uh his girlfriend essentially who he tried to commit suicide with hoping that she's in this land also yeah um but but yeah i think the real the most interesting thing once again is you know generally a lot of the villains in the show are other humans well, that have been brought here to be heroes and were um perverted essentially by the powers they were given and it's cool and there's like this very like kind of cool like akatsuki-esque group after him they're based on the seven deadly sins like i don't know i like it and i like i you know i listen like I mean, I'm always I'm always a fan of a badass cat girl. Right. So there's a totally. there's a badass cat girl in it, uh, and uh, you know there's a kid adventurer. I mean, the show's got everything. But probably the best part about this, I we haven't even mentioned yet, is like his. Uh, and I think this is how my nephew sold really sold me and you on this is that um, he gets because he is. Um, He's very weak. He's got like one HP basically and he's poisonous. Uh, and he's also constantly like eating sedatives all the time. Uh, his, his team carries him around in a coffin. Yeah. He, well, he has no drive and he saw a coffin at one point and he's like, well, that looks comfortable. And yeah. yeah. And so, like you said, his team literally drags a coffin. It's so good with him and, in it. And he's constantly like, He's such a boss because he just uh, he just only does things that he wants to do. Well, and and the the people that are with him, the the ones that the sort of crew he acquires, yeah. you know, they're they like 
kind of, they don't worship him, but they kind of worship him. They they're totally like, do. Yeah. yeah. Like they're like, he's, he's the best. He's so powerful somehow. Yeah. Um, and, but, but it's so great because he's like, yeah, no, I don't care. Like, like sensei's going to save the day. No. Well, he's so aloof. <laughs> yeah. And, and that makes him so different from the uh, other worlders. But, um, and, you know, obviously he does end up saving the day, but it's never in the way that you expect. Oh, yeah. And that, that's the other thing I really love about it, too, is, you know, every one of these isekai, you know, you so, sort of know, like, okay, that was a fight and he's going to, like, you know, use the powers he already has and he'll dig deep and figure out something else. Yeah. I mean, this, every time they're like, every time the bad guy's like, now I'll destroy you all, he always walks over there to get killed. Like, that's <laughs> that's always the thing. So you never really know how any of the battles are going to resolve. And that's really fun. Yeah, well, and, and one of the things that I really do like about about Sensei is that, you know, they really they really do take into account the fact that, that he's a writer, that, yes. he, that characters mean something to him. So when he encounters someone new, he's like, he's like looking at the... Oh, there's a lot of sadness in you. Yeah, like, you know, he really, he really sort of picks up on the issues that people are having, and and he and he used that, and like, you know, he gives people advice. It's like it's never, you know, it's never the the choice of the two that they give him. It's like, well, but what do you really want? What are you gonna get yeah. out of this? You know, I there's just such interesting things that that sort of point to the way that that his mind works as a writer. It's not exactly talk no jitsu in Naruto, and Naruto is like, we both love ramen. Yeah. Why are we fighting, bro? Uh, and it's not, and it's also not quite like, um, there is an element that's a little bit like, you know, when, um, one of my favorites about Demon Slayer is like Tanjiro has like cut this demon into pieces yeah. and then we get their like sad backstory and then they're like yeah. slowly talking about how they regret their life as a demon and Tanjiro's like, it's going to be okay yeah. now, bro. And I'm, I'm trying to like just brutally destroy this monster. So it's got a little bit of that, but um, but more like comedic. Yeah, you know, I will say if you have not seen any isekai at all, I think this might be a weird one to start on because mm -hmm. it feels like very counter to a lot of isekai. Uh, unless you just want something totally counter. I mean, it is very yeah. counter. Um, but, but I, I personally really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I loved the fact that, um, I just didn't really know where it was going to go. I love the fact that it had sort of this dark humor that I think is harder to find nowadays. Mm -hmm. It felt very, uh, daring, uh, and weird. And I really like Sensei. I really yeah. like the lead character. I think he's very much, uh, a, um, a, a not, <laughs> he's not normal, you know, like when we're, we're, we, we see a lot of like, you know, Luffy, Naruto, Tanjiro characters, and he is, he is none of those guys. Yeah. Not even close. I, I like when, uh, when he accidentally levels up. Like, yes. Like when, yes. when, just by like almost getting killed or like, I think at one point just by being dragged in the coffin, he leveled up. Yeah. Like, yeah, it yeah. just uh, they just do such interesting, funny things, and they have these weird little video game things that happen in it that mm -hmm. are that are just a weird little mechanic in the story that's fun. But like, yeah, it's it's just it's so it's so unique. Yeah, I guess you know there are elements of the character of Freerin that I kind of like can okay. see. Yeah, because Freerin is like because she's so long lived. She's aloof. She's sort of aloof. Yeah. She doesn't. She's not really interested in being a hero yep. anymore. 100%. She just wants to like do her thing, which is find spell books. Yeah, sort of like how Sensei is sort of like wants to you know, as, <laughs> other than try to get killed, he just sort of wants to write and, well, you know. And she's sort of acquired an entourage, even though she hasn't, like, mm -hmm. she, she wasn't seeking an entourage. She just sort of acquired, acquired uh, followers. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to, this show does have a few of my favorite episode titles, though. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and one of my favorite things about the show is that every title is a line that is said in it. So what yeah, is yeah, so the funny ones um, with it? Someone who wants to be eaten has come to the castle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, turn me into a lump of ash. That one's really good. Yeah. Um, reflect on your failure to kill me properly. Yeah. And I think all of those are lines that Sensei has said to people. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and I the love lines that. like come pretty quickly in the episode they a lot do. of the time. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it's, it's just, it's so entertaining. It's so funny. If you want something that's dark comedy, if you want something that's isekai, but a little different or just something kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, you no longer allowed in another world is kind of great. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Check All right, guys. Talk to you Bye. later. Bye.